Our next match is Janet Atwell versus Sierra Reams. This is a B-side match. That is Sierra in the white shirt lagging the one ball and this is Janet lagging the five ball who is just out of frame that you can't see. I want to welcome you guys to our live stream. I am Kevin Ross. We are Railbirds Productions. Coming at you live from Breaker Sky Lounge in Herndon, Virginia. This is the North American Pool Tour 10 Ball Invitational, it's their inaugural tournament. Women's Division One Pro Event. Janet has won the lag and is racking and breaking. We're playing race to seven, 10 ball, CSI rules, alternate break, rack your own. We're using a magic rack on all of the tables, not just the TV table. There we go, Janice break. I'm pretty solid. Uh, did she make a ball? I do not think so. Nope, so that brings Sierra to the table. She has an easy shot in this one to get started with, and the two ball is down here by this bottom left corner. I'm late, I know. So as I was saying, she has easy shots in the one and the two to get started with, uh, but the three ball is in a spot there that is not 100% uh, cooperating with easy runouts. It's kind of uh, congruent with with running out. But we'll see what she can do with this. She's looking at coming down below this eight and then possibly either banking the three cross side or maybe playing the safe on the three. I don't think this, that's the spot on the table she had picked out uh, when she shot the two. <sighs> and on the far table we have uh, Adrienne Beach playing Brianna. Uh, playing Brianna. Adrienne is the president of the NAPT. Is it mapped? Is that how they say it? Is it mapped? Mm -hmm. Not N A P T or uh, whatever. I say it mapped. Do they say it mapped? I have no idea. Okay then. So what's doing here? Uh, she's kicking with this two rails. Oh, and that didn't come off that second rail the way she was expecting. <laughs> Even with ball in hand, it's not that easy in this three ball to get started with. You know, long shot on the three to start.
Well, DJ Jesse J, if uh, you don't like this music, um, we are gladly taking uh, donations for some royalty-free music that we can add to our playlist. Overall position, just a little. She left herself a thin cut on the floor. She's probably gonna have to. She's probably gonna have to bring the skew ball around three rails for the five. I don't think she can hold it there. For the five, I think she's gonna have to come around, avoiding, avoiding the eight ball. I see the eight ball is a big ball getting in the way. I guess it was the seven ball is the one that got in the way, not the eight. Ah, uh, she can still see the five to back cut it if she chooses. So I guess uh, after this game, I can do intros that didn't get done. Yeah, it, hey, it's all cool, Jesse. Just messing with you a little bit. Oh, I guess Janet can see the edge. I thought she was yeah. completely hooked on this. No, she can see it. I don't think she can see enough to make it. Nope, just play safe minus six. That's that's really good speed. Nice shot. Yes, it is. And Sierra is going for her jump cue. Called the five on the side. Um, oh, that was a really nice try. Is that keep ball going in? Is. Oh, that was. Bit of unluck unlucky there. That was. <laughs> so where Janet's going to want to start with this five ball. Probably the, the, the ten ball right there. Would you play it all the way up in the corner? It would be this lower right-hand corner on the uh, stream. Well, it looks like she's going to play it in the side. No, I think myself, I would just play it in this... Uh, bottom right corner on this screen, uh, and just draw right. and drawing the cue ball uh, to the left of the seven for a shot on the six. Looks like she's gonna I think she's looking at playing safe. I don't think she likes where the five is. I think if she uh, gets the magic rack out of there, she might like it. It kind of. Uh, fools you a little bit on how close everything is together with that other thing in your way, you know. Was April on two? She on one. Who? Uh, Sierra. Sorry. Sarah on two or is she on one? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't think it'll matter now. It doesn't matter now. I said something when I first sat down. I pointed yeah, it. Yeah, and I highlighted the thing, and I hit delete, and it only deleted the last word instead of the whole thing. <laughs> yes, you did. Maybe by the final match tomorrow, I'll I'll have uh, 
started remembering to remove that. <coughs> I'm um, pretty sure Karen did. Don't take my word for it, though. Right, it looks like uh, Janice is going off, off the edge of the five for safety, trying to get behind this 10 ball. And she's come up just a little short. <coughs> um, if that magic wreck's in the way, she'll... <laughs> You'll definitely want to remove that if it is in the way. Well, at least I would want to remove it. Yeah. Um, with the uh, six ball right there, she's probably going to run into it when she makes this five. Uh, BMA, I'll go make sure of that, but... Uh, so sorry. Okay. Uh, but I'm pretty sure Karen won. All right, well, she's uh, ended up pretty nice on the six on the side. She can six on the side to the rail and back out to the for the seven in, well, either of these bottom two corners would work. The bottom help. right corner is probably the end. You just have to, uh, she needed to hit it harder to bounce off or stop on the way in, I think. Yeah, she can <laughs> still she can still roll to the rail and back out for the eight. No, she's got to come out to far enough to shoot between the ten and the eight. You know, she needs that gap between the ten and the eight. <coughs> and that's probably just a little bit over pocket speed on this table to get it back out there. Or maybe not. Maybe. Mm. And she just rattled it. Yeah, those... Those kind of off-angle cuts like that uh, from the rail, not the easiest of shots. No, some of my worst. It's I don't like them. So Janet looks pretty straight. Enough. She's probably just going to draw back just a few inches and cut the eight in. She's going to stay below the 10 and just cut the 8 in. The cue ball's going to naturally come across for the 9. I think she wanted to draw just a couple more inches in that, but I think she'll be okay. And that is a confirm on the Karen Core match. Karen and Eugenia Gif Giftopoulos, uh, Karen won. Hit that with good speed. Just pop off the rail, ten in the other corner. Yeah. I even just pull it back a few inches. Oh. Looked like she was trying to draw it and then maybe just uh, dropped her arm a little bit or something. She's asked the tournament director to <coughs> remove the magic yeah, rack. I guess that's why they haven't moved it up till now. It might yeah, be. Yeah, sitting underneath the 10 ball. Yeah, at the beginning of the rack, right after the break, they looked at it and well, determined that it was touching the 10. No. So they decided not to touch it at the start of the rack. <coughs> well, the 10 ball. All right, Janet takes the first game. Huh? Uh, did you did you do at least the who we are and where we are and why we're here? I did who we are and where we are. Uh, why are we here? The napped. I did say that we are playing okay. the uh, NAPT North American Pool Tour <coughs> Ten Ball. Well, let me introduce invitation. you to your players. Yes, why don't you introduce us to our players? Uh, Who's playing in front of us here? We are watching Sierra Rain. She's at the table wrecking now, and Janet Atwell. Janet comes to us from Bristol, Virginia. She. Uh, uh, is the owner operator at Borderline Billiards. She is sponsored by Blue Emu. Uh, she's been um, playing pro since 2004. Uh, she has, just in this last year, multiple state titles from a couple of different states, uh, Virginia being one of them, I know. Um, she is also a cancer, a breast cancer survivor. 
Really nice lady. We were glad to have her come uh, commentate yesterday. And then um, the young lady we have breaking is Miss Sierra Reams. Sierra is also a uh, Virginian. That's, is that Virginian? Uh, she is currently in high school. I don't know how old she is. I don't see that here. Um, she th pretty sure she is part of the um, Atlantic Cup team. Is that correct, uh, BCAPL referee? I didn't. I wasn't in the room. I didn't get a chance to do my pre-match uh, interviews, and I'm sorry. I'm slacking. <coughs> but she is one of the juniors in the room. Plays very well. Do you, you don't see any patches or anything on her as far as sponsors, do you? There's Not no, yet. no, nothing on her shirt or anything indicating a sponsor. So, but I will ask her at some point if they take a break. Um, Janet decided not to go for the long straight in on the one. Play safe instead. Okay. So, um, according to BCAPL referee, um, Sierra is 18. And the yep, I imagine, is for the Atlantic Cup team. <coughs> First alternate for the team. Yeah, I know. I'm terrible. Pardon me. So it looks like Sierra can see the edge of the one. <laughs> When you say the edge, you're talking about the left edge. The left edge, yes. So she can just. Well, she is. I think she is looking at kicking it. Oh. So maybe, uh, maybe she can't see the edge of it. Yeah, uh, she could see the left edge of it. It would be so easy to get in behind yeah. that. Uh, yeah, she probably would have shot it. Ball. She probably would have shot it by now. Yeah. So it looks like she's looking at maybe going two rails behind the behind the seven and behind the three. Okay, did she, yeah, she call it in the corner? I didn't see if she called anything. No, she just missed clipping that ball on the way out of there. She has ball in hand on the one. That's the two ball sitting in between the three ball and seven ball. Then that's the three right next to the one. And then that's the four over here by this side pocket on the bottom of the screen. Next to the six ball. Yes, she is. I, I know this. No. I, I, I have, I am informed, Renee, on players and such. Uh, is he able to give you a profile on Janet? <laughs> Just did not get the opportunity to talk to Sierra. All right, so Janet has played nice position on this two, and this just roll forward for the three. Still not sure exactly what her plan is going to be for this four. I don't know if she's going to try to get on the short side with a four up in this up table, or if she's thinking of the four five combination. I 
Is she gonna be playing the, uh, the combination, you think, from uh, the four five? Well, from the angle she's left herself, I don't think she's left herself enough angle to really get on the short side of the floor. So okay. yeah, she's gonna be playing this combination. She's waiting for uh, Sierra to look up better so she can call the five. They have to call the uh, the call and pocket. So. Nice shot. Controlled uh, controlled where the four ball was going nicely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Left a little bit of angle so that she can play around the table for the six come out. A couple of rails to <coughs> get that six ball in the side pocket. Yep, yeah, that's the six by the side, and then the seven up by the nine, and then the eight in the bottom left. So here, I think she's probably just gonna go. I think she's probably just gonna go one rail to the she's end rail, and then one rail to the end rail, and then back to the center. Yep, drawn it out. I think she she thought it. You know, she was digging in there deep enough. Maybe it would pull off a little bit deeper down the rail. But she should be all right here, back and forth for the eight. Shot on the seven, got the nice thin cut coming back and forth. Mm -hmm. She's got yeah, nice here she could, you know, probably shoot just a little bit of high left, I think. Probably come around two rails, three rails towards nine. And Janet's sitting in a good spot to extend her lead. Just a little bit more left on that. Yeah, a little more finesse with the. Gotta finesse that around to get it to take the English off of that rail. So, just in a bit of a sticky wicket here. Yes, sir. Kind of a long distance jump to get over that 10 and still keep the balls on the table. And kicking off this right rail, that's really tough to judge. She's gonna go for the jump shot. Yep. Airborne. Yeah, this is gonna be tough to clear the ten and still keep the nine ball and two ball on the table. And not go down and scratch in the corner and yeah. <laughs> If she hits the ball full, she shouldn't scratch. Oh, no. Um, made, it, yeah, did, made it and scratched. Yes, it was an anteism. All right, Sierra ties that up, one apiece. Well, thank you guys for tuning in today.
coming at you live from Breaker Sky Lounge. We need to get some spiked feet on this table so stop sliding around. Mm -hmm. This floor is slippery. Yeah, it is. <laughs> So it's going to be Janet's break. We are playing alternate break. Rack your own. Race to seven. Race to seven. Both sides. Both sides. And this is a B-side match. This is a B-side match. Now, do we know if the finals, is, is it a true double elimination, or what's the format of the finals? Do we know that? Um, I do not know that. I know um, with the other Pro Tour, it is a single set. Okay. Uh, they extend the race. Um, I, yeah, being this is their first tournament, the website isn't, you know, complete with all of the specifics and regulations and things, um, but I will ask uh, before we get to that, I'll know today. Yeah, it's not something that we need to know for today, but. Yeah. I was just curious. Yeah, it's kind of nice to know. But I know most of them, they aren't. They extend the race out to nine. Mm -hmm. right. Sierra has a long shot on this one here to start with. And this is the, the two ball down here between the ten and the eight. And... Just she did. has a nice little alleyway through there. She held that ball up nicely. And a nice uh, clearance to get down to the three clearance. Yeah, if she can come around two rails uh, around all these balls, around the seven. Yeah, you draw it, draw it tight and come in between the four, seven and take the, and tor going towards the center of the table. That side pocket is huge. I you know, I put my ball, the cue ball, in that side pocket so often that I think I'd prefer coming out a little bit tighter. Well, she's left this two ball nestled in behind this ten. Yeah, but where does it go when she kicks at this? Does the that, that ten goes in the upper right corner? Oh, okay. I think she might have called it. She said something to Sierra as she was walking by. Well. She hit that with the speed that she was playing it. And now Sierra has the option because uh, Janet has uh, slopped the two ball in. We're going to see if she uh, remembers this. We can't, you know, we can't tell her. No, de <coughs> definitely not. Well, at the three ball, is that the three ball right there? No, it's the one she's got to kick at it or jump it. Can you speak up a little? Can I speak up a little? I can put it closer to my mouth. I don't want to be uh, saying stuff like that too loud for a player to hear me. No, you've just been a little bit quiet for the whole match is all. Not just that one time. Yeah. Anyway, how are you doing? No, I don't want to turn it up. No, no. I don't want to talk louder where they can hear me. I've been at the table and had it affect me in a match. All right, she's uh, called the three in the corners. Well, I hope something good happens for her. Well, she made it. She made it. Doesn't have really anything on the four ball. Unfortunately, that was th that was the problem with that shot from the beginning. Is no. even if you make it, there's there's no reward no for reward. making it. Unless she can kick and you know stick behind the nine or something. No. You know, with something like that, where it's not a ball in hand, and something your opponent does, is not obligated to tell you, hey, you have the option here. You know. No, of course not. You got to know the rules when you come and play, and sometimes you know we, the their girls are used to playing nine ball or something, and so when you slop it in, you got to shoot, right? You know, or when when you your opponent when you slop it in, it's your shot too, and I think that's kind of what goes through the mind. Mm -hmm. All right, so she's kicking back. 
She's kicking at this behind the nine. She's probably going to be kicking soft. She definitely tried to get that uh, cue ball to stay behind the nine. Yeah. <sighs> she's left a shot at the four to the corner. She's laid it up on the six. She's looking at. I don't know if she's going to want somebody to watch this. I don't think so. I think it's going to. It's pretty clear. She'd have to like almost completely miss the four. <laughs> No, she would. She'd have to completely miss the four to hit the six first because it's above it. Correct. <coughs> so, yeah, she'll shoot the four in the corner. The cue ball's going to come off the six so she can use that to help draw over. Problem is these, both of these bottom two pockets are blocked by the eight and nine. She's going to have to come to the rail and back out yeah. for the five in the side. No, uh, no, uh, does it pass the eight? Maybe it does pass the eight. You know, from this angle, it looks like it doesn't, but from the other angle, it looks like it does. So maybe it does pass the eight. No. I'm thinking it's got to be really close to it, though, because Janet's really taking her time on it. Shot. From, from get out, get oh out of no. there. That stinking 10 ball. Alright, she's going to the jump queue. Get, get to see another one. If we get the other angle, we can see the ball go up in the air because she's going to kind of be in the way here. I was going to say she's probably even money <coughs> to make this and didn't oh, get it out of my mouth yeah, and she hit she the, hit the 10. 10. Yeah. yeah. On the background there, you got the Adrienne Beach playing uh, Brianna Miller. It's Adrienne at the table now. Adrienne to shoot. Now oh, she changed her mind. She's going to shoot the other way. She's going to just follow over to the side rail over here. Yeah. Either like the seven up in the up in the corner or in the side. I don't know if the seven goes in the side. Well, she, she played it like it goes in the side, so I'm going to guess it goes in the side. And she was just looking it up, eyeing it up in the corner. I think it's right. too far. She called it in the corner. I think it's too far out of the hole and too close to the rail to be shooting on the side. Nah. Just make it and stay down. Yeah. I'm not very good at these shots. I'd probably just try to play safe behind the 10. Yeah, put the 7 ball up on the uh, end rail and the cue ball behind the 10. She's made this nice shot. It almost sounded like she miscued there. I heard something that time. I didn't hear it last match with April, but uh, it uh, came out really nice. She hit that perfect. <laughs> Draw it back. Yeah, drop foot. back to around the to around the middle of the table. Yeah. Foot, foot and a half. Mm. Mm. Got a hold of that one. Yeah, she should still be all right. She's got the angle to go to the end rail and back has, up. All she has to do is make it. Yeah. Natural shape. Automatic. Just don't put any extra unintentional right hand English on it. Mm, just center ball is all you mm. need. Just center ball. Just roll it in. Position on the 10 will be automatic. Like so. Nice shot. Not straight up for a little bit of a cut, but she should be able to handle this just fine. All right. Nice. 
Nice out, Sierra. Mm -hmm. Take the early lead. And yeah, that's going to be Sierra's rack and break now. See if she can keep it going. See if she can make something on the break and keep the pressure on. Whatever you, and Rick, and uh, Mark are doing with these young ladies, uh, it's working. <laughs> Turning them out of their, from their factory? Mm-hmm. <coughs> I think they're clones. <laughs> All right, Sierra's break. And, then, and there's uh, two more rounds of play after this today, so we get, we'll have two more matches coming at you, 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. Yep. And that's Eastern time. That is yep. Eastern, Eastern U.S. time for mm -hmm. our international viewers. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know what that means for you, it's 2.35 p.m. on Saturday here. <laughs> on Saturday. <laughs> you gotta, you, you know, you have to. <laughs> oh, she's hit him solid, got a nice spread, but <laughs> did not make anything. No, and it looks like that 10 ball is uh, right on the back point of the uh, magic rack. All right, and that's the uh, two ball in near that upper right corner. Mm -hmm. So the one does go in the corner by the five. She can draw over to the she can draw over to the side rail, or can actually can she draw without hitting the eight? Actually, I don't know. She might have to brush the eight, or actually I look from the other angle, and it's no, she won't hit the eight. No. From this angle, it looks like she'll hit the eight, but from this angle, it's pretty it's clear she, she won't. Is she gonna draw off of it and back out? Yeah, um, thanks guys for the compliments. We really appreciate it. Because that's the two in the upper, um, or the, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Yeah, so in the upper right is where the two is. So she should be able to, she should be able to draw to that side rail and back to the center. But do you want to cause separation between that five and eight? That's the three and eight. Is it the three and eight? Okay, that's the five down here in the corner. Do you want to separate them a little bit? Make it run out a little easier? Apparently, Janet wanted to, but no. That, that's worked out nicely. Uh, yeah. The uh, the three is opened up nice. The, the eight, six are okay. Yeah, the, then the four and the five. And then once the five is gone, the six goes in that corner mm -hmm. or in the side. I think it goes even with the five there, but it won't be there anymore, yeah. probably. When she plays the five, she can yeah. just shoot the six on the other side. Up in the she corner. Has, she has choices. Yeah. So it worked out. She hit that one nice. Yeah, she's she was on she's straight in. She's, she's going to have to put a nice draw stroke on this one because she's pretty straight in on this. Mm -hmm. Snatch it backwards. To just about where she is now is how far she needs to draw it mm -hmm. so that she can roll forward for the five. Uh -oh. uh, she, uh, she stood up on that one. Yeah. She can't even see the edge of this to play safe. No, she's having a kick at it. I wonder if she's going to call the ten. I think I don't think she's kicking it that hard. I think she's just trying to mm -hmm. get kick to kick the four over and get the cue ball to the other the side seven. of the balls, and that she's done that perfectly. That's yeah, nice. She's got yeah, that ten ball is right in between the two of them. Nice speed. And she didn't tie up the six, seven, eight in the process. But she did bump the seven, but she didn't tie him up. Now I think Sierra is going to attempt to do something similar to kick the four up table and try to leave the cue ball behind this stack of balls, I think. What is she looking at? Can she see this? No, she can't see the four to make it. No, I'm not sure. Yeah, she's looking at where her cue ball is coming afterwards. To, you know, can she get it up into the back of that stack? Kick, kick the floor down tape to the side rail and to the end rail and 
Right. Possibly, and you know, can't she get her ball into the back of the stack? That's what I would be trying to do. I'm not sure. Yep, well, that was what she was attempting. And if it sits on the end rail, this is this is no gimme. It's not a hanger. Oh, it's not a hanger. Cue ball's gonna be going kind of either at the five, you know, towards the five or at the stack, and you don't want it hitting that stack of balls because of, then you end up hooked on the five, or she can spin it. I think she. I mean, I think I'd spin this with some uh, some right with some right English. Mm. She's not even going for it. Just trying to get down here behind these balls. Yeah. Now that the uh, now that the four is off the rail, it does make the four a little bit easier. And she can come straight. The line um, with center ball is straight back down between the seven and the five. And if she, you know, you play to overcut it, if anything. Yeah, I think she's just going to come straight down between the 7 and 5. One rail straight down. Don't hit it. Don't hit it. Uh, she hit still it, okay. but it's still okay. If she, can, if she can get that cue ball around. She can't hold it there. She cannot hold it there for the 6 in the side. So she's going she's to have to come around for the 6 in the same pocket as the 5 if she can... Come she can around get or... Uh, well, up if and down table. Up and down table, the 9 ball's... 9 uh, ball's pretty big. Yeah. I think, yeah, she's going to have to come around. But to get enough right spin on that with the bridge oh, what, uh, is a little bit tricky. Don't like running into those uh, those balls either to try to get a shot on them. You know, if you run into the six, you have a good chance of being hooked. If you run into the seven, then the cue ball is going to glance off to the right, and you won't have a shot on the six that way either. Must it go between there? And you got the bird's eye view over there. I don't think it does, though. No, I don't think it does. That's why I said, you know, if it's the seven, then the cue ball's going to be glancing off to the right and mm -hmm. won't have a shot on the six. So that's why I didn't like running into him, because it was hard to come up with a, with a shot. I mean, she can play safe. She can just roll the six between the ten, eight, and leave the cue ball on top of the eight, or on top of the ten, whichever angle could, looks better. Uh, billiard it off of the ten, too. Maybe. I think she's just going to play safe. Just roll the, f the six to the rail and either put the ball either behind the eight or the ten, whichever angle looks better to her. And she was trying to put it on the eight. Mm -hmm. She got her. I think. She Did she get her? I think she may have a shot. <laughs> she's just going to roll the rack around. That was funny. Let me see that on the uh, SVB match once. I think so. <laughs> Can she see through here to shoot the six? That's what I want to know. Inquiring minds. Yeah, she's kicking uh, at. She was kicking at. It. Yeah, she was looking at where she wanted the six to go, behind the seven to the, you know to just on the side rail, just short of the side pocket and back up. Uh oh. Right now, this is another time where Sierra has the option whether to accept it or pass back. I think this one I would take, if I even if I knew that I had the option. Yeah. <laughs> She can go for this six, but it's going to be hard to get to the eight. She may choose to bank the six ball straight up and down table, just bank the six towards the ten, have the cue ball go to that right rail, and then back across behind the nine. Yeah, I don't think, yeah, you don't want to, glancing off the nine here is dangerous. Yeah, the six ball up this way, and the cue ball comes this way, back behind the nine. Something like that is what I'm thinking. Hey, it's a golf flag. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the glance not that night is so dangerous there. Oh. And she's going to try and get that ball out of the rack out of there. So now what do you do? Maybe same shot, but I was like I just diagrammed on the uh, six ball, banked the eight up table, try to get that cue ball behind the ten. She looked to see if the eight goes. I don't know if it does. 
If it does go, then yeah, I would, I would cut a D8. I just I didn't think it went, but if it does, yeah. if that is available to her, then yeah, that's what I'd shoot at. Uh, it's pretty tight, but it looks it's like right, it may yeah. go. Hoping to miss it on the pro side, so the eight ends up on the end rail if you miss it. Oh, I played it overcut it. Cube holds down table. Or she may even just be flat out playing the safe, and just it just, just looks over, like yeah. just overcutting it, just going all out safe. No, that's not well, all out that's safe. That's, that's all out making the ball. Well, that's the safest safe there is. That is the safest. A little close to our work, but this will do. <laughs> that was a nice shot. Yes, it was a very nice shot. And it, on this view, it looks like she's like super close, but there is a few inches gap between those balls. Yeah, in this view, it looks pretty close. From here, you can tell there's a little bit of a little bit of a gap between there, about almost a ball's width. Yeah, so you just push it forward the end rail and uh, straight down for the ten. It looks closer than it actually is. Well, because she it, uh, elected to come two rails out of that corner there, she's left Janet with not the greatest shot. Had she done the one rail back down, I don't know, may have been kind of the same thing, but I think, you know, the right. s swinging it out like she tried to, it ended up, you know, better for her. And right. maybe, you know, maybe that's why she did it. I, I think she she's could just, just go one rail. I think she's just more comfortable shooting that type of shot, you know, with the bottom left instead of uh, instead of you know more a more mm -hmm. center ball hit because some players just always shoot that kind of shot with you know the bottom left or bottom right to come around two rails instead of a more center ball yeah. type of hit. That was a nice shot by Janet. Smart yeah, shot. Have haven't left anything. Too easy for Sierra. And Sierra's supposed to basically do the same thing to her. And when she does, she, that cue ball is going to be right over there, like almost on the 10. I mean, you, you could even get super lucky and have it just barely touch into the back of the 10. If she, if she banks the 9 ball straight up table t up the center of the table, I don't think the cue ball is going to touch the 10. I think the cue ball is going to hit the rail to the right of the 10. No. And then um, bounce off the rail up the side rail. Uh, she's looking like she was wanting to cut at it, but I don't. I don't know that we're supposed to. Heck of a shot, and this looks like it's going to be uh -oh. a pretty makeable shot. I mean, it's, it's a thin cut, but she's she's just sliced and diced two of them. I know. So yeah, she's got those eighteen-year-old eyes. Yeah. Yeah. When I when I saw her make the nine, I saw the kilo going up table. I thought it was going to be perfect, and I saw that little. Then I saw the that little bit of spin that took off that top yeah. rail. <laughs> Map starts spinning it back in towards the seven. If it's ten, not to ten, yeah, whatever. If it's the other, you know, I mean, two inches to the left yeah, is that's huge. Yeah, world of difference on this shot. Yeah, she just called the bank. So she's banking it up to the that upper right corner on the screen. Let's see if she has the speed where it comes back down only half a little more than halfway looks like if you miss it looks like she was trying to dr use draw so the cue ball stays on the end rail and i think this is going to be a tie ball game hey yep that's what i'm thinking that's too bad because that was such a nice shot on the nine yeah it was no what, what what's that saying no good shot goes unpunished <laughs> I think it's no good deed, but yeah. same, same. Yeah, we, use, we, we <laughs> just turn it around a little bit for pool. No great shot goes unpunished. Unless your name's Sky Woodward. <laughs> I guess I'll have to change my name. To Sky Woodward? Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, Janet ties it up. Two games apiece. Two love. <laughs> no, love means zero. Oh, two all. Yes. Yeah. See, I don't play tennis. I don't play tennis <laughs> either. They don't like to say that you have uh, zero because that sounds bad. So, love. So not all pocket call safety. No, that is not call safety. Nope. It, it's not. It's not the same rules that they were playing at the Kinky Memorial. This is CSI rules ten ball, where you have to call pocket, but you don't have to call safe. So. No, the only time you have the option is if your opponent slops something in. If your opponent slaps something in and they didn't make the ball that they called, then the incoming player has the option to accept the table or pass it back. No, well they don't make the ball that they called in the hole they called it in. It yeah, doesn't matter right. how it gets to the hole. If they don't make the shot they called, yeah. Yeah. and they slap something else in, then the incoming player has the option. Yeah. But if they just flat out just miss the shot, the incoming player has no option. They have the option to shoot. <laughs> yeah, shoot or shoot. <laughs> Shoot or forfeit. Those, those <laughs> are your <laughs> options. <laughs> yep. And then those of you, if you're just joining us, this is a race to seven. You're watching a B-side match. This is race seven, alternate break. Um, the winner of this uh, match is guaranteed an invite to the next tournament. And they're in the money, too. And they're in the money. Nice. So this is an important match. Yes, it is. And uh, do we know uh, who the winner of this match plays? Um, I do not know. I that match might still be going on, also. Yeah. The, um, all the, all of the uh, B side matches for this round. Th 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 that's what's playing right now is all B side matches. So the, uh, the yeah wouldn't know, and then and even if it's they're waiting for somebody from the A side, that round isn't playing yet. All right, she's called something in the side. Is she playing this one five three combo in the side, or is she? What is she calling? Did she call the one in the side? She called the one in the side. Okay, that was a nice shot. No, no, she she, gave, she gave up her shot. She uh, did not call the one. She, she called the three. Uh, she she, she, she called, and that, that's not what I called. So, and so now here is where Janet has the option. Yes, because she made a ball that, but not what she called. So this is where Janet has the option. To put. Yes. Yeah, but I think she's going to elect to shoot. Yeah, the two balls next, and that's the one that's out there in the middle of the table. Mm, looks like she's looking at cutting this in the side, maybe by the uh, nine ball. Three yeah. balls uh, up yeah. in the... Uh, Cue ball's going to naturally go down towards the three. Yeah. It may brush off the four, but that should be okay. That's fine. That's fine. It puts the four up there a little... It makes, you know, playing shape a little easier when your balls are right next to each other like that. Yep. A little more... Uh, just a little more working room. Yeah. Instead of the four or five being right next to each other. Yeah. Freeze it up a little bit. Gives a little bit... A few more options to where you want to play position. So three, four, five all look pretty routine, as well as the six. Now the six to the seven, seven to the eight. Seven to the eight is she has to maintain a good angle from the six to the seven to the eight. Yeah, because of where the nine Especially is. Especially because of where the nine is. That's going to be key. Seven, eight, nine. Now, if she can play the eight in the side, that would be that would help get position on the nine down in the corner. And it looks like the nine is too far past the cor uh, the side pocket to be playing the eight off of it. It's yeah, completely out of the hole. Yeah, I don't think that eight goes in the side off the nine. Can you get on the five in the side? Is that what she's looking at? Yeah, she's not completely straight on this four. She has just a little bit of angle. So I think she has enough angle where she can kind of force it off the end rail and back out towards the center, but she's just going to follow two rails. 
And that speed is perfect. No, she can go to, I don't think she can go to side rail. I think it's just like a shoot and stop, isn't it? Maybe roll it forward a little bit so that if she, she rolls pretty, it. She looks pretty straight on this side. If style. she rolls it forward just a couple of inches, she can to get to the seven, she can move the nine. The ball come around okay, the so ten ball and okay, into so the follow, nine ball. Follow one rail right into the nine. Yep. You take the chance of having the nine uh, you know, sit on top of the eight after that. Yeah. I like following one rail because that'll land, it'll automatically land you in good position on the seven. That's a good shot. She just so as long as she ends up, as long as she ends up straight on the eight, then she'll yeah. have good position on the nine. Mm -hmm. She just needs to pull it back a couple inches. If anything, you want to go past straight in. She's dead straight in. She's going to have to follow it up. Yeah, just follow, just... I think she's going to have to follow it up almost to the end rail because she's got that... It's almost dead straight in, but it is the tiniest bit of a cut to the right. Yeah, that's what I was saying. If anything, when she draws a seven, she needs to go past straight in because then, mm -hmm. you know... Yeah, you can slow it in. And, yeah, you can go keep up and go to the rail and back out and still have a shot on the nine. Whereas if she has to cut this eight, the cue ball's going away from the nine, that could be problematical. I think, sh and she can hit it a little fat with some English, and Ooh, I think she did there. That's but not what she wanted. Yeah, no, we don't want it on the end rail. As soon as she hit it, she kind of stared up at the ceiling a little bit. Yeah, that, this point's big here. The point on the side pocket is huge. Tough shot. Yeah. But to me, it definitely looks like the nine ball's far enough from the side where she doesn't have to worry about a scratch. At least not from this angle. Not a scratch, but if you, you know, hitting the point. Nice and shot. Yeah, Hit that nice. That was really nice. Wonder if that's those uh, Tor Lori uh, drills and workouts. Yeah, Janet was uh, one of the 14 day students of Tor Lowry, which was. I didn't know that till yesterday. But yesterday you, when I told you? Yeah, when you told me. You knew it all along. Yeah. Keeping secrets from me like I that. I knew it since she was invited to do it last year because I put in a um, thing to be, you know, be a con uh, one of the people on it. And we also know somebody else who did it. Uh, Julianne Van Goodman uh, did the 14 day also. Uh -huh. Is that on YouTube? Um, I'm not sure if uh, Julianne is or not. Maybe it is. I haven't seen it. I've seen a little bit of Janet's, but I have not seen Juliana's. I have not seen Janet's. I'm going to have to go look for that. So it's going to be Sierra's break. Mm -hmm. She needs to hold serve here. Not, not let, uh, don't let Janet pull away from her. Keep the pressure yeah, on. Kind of you know. hold on. Don't let her get too far ahead. Mm -hmm. Keep it tight. Those of you that are just joining us, you can uh, you can rewind and watch what you missed. Well, at least Make back to four hours of it. That's almost back to the beginning. That is almost back to the beginning. We started at 10, and it's now 3, so you could rewind all the way up to... The end of the first match. The end of the first <laughs> match. Because <laughs> that one was done about 40 minutes early or something like that. Uh, all right, Sarah's break. Here we go. Right. I'm going to see how the uh, winner side, uh, uh, the last round, how the winner side matches ended up so I can see who could possibly be, you know, who we have to pick from for our next match. See who hasn't been on the stream yet or, you know. And speaking of watching past matches, uh, yeah, the entire stream from yesterday, all 10 hours of it, is, is currently on YouTube, so you can go back and watch that. But once I upload all the individual match recordings, um, then you know the, the full 10-hour video, I'll, I'll take that one down and just have individual recordings. Um, and labeled who they are. And labeled who they are, What they are, they are yes. you know, what tournament they're from. So 
You don't have yeah. to go sit For there. Easy searching, easy, yeah. easy on-demand playback. Mm-hmm. And I'll get those uploaded within the next week or so. Yeah, we got to finish this and then drive back to Michigan. <coughs> Well, looks like she's uh, decided she's going to take on this one ball in the corner here. Yeah. Well, There's a three next. The three is yeah, next, just down the, table yeah, by the, the seven. Two on, yeah, she made the two on the break. That's the three, you know, out towards the middle of the table by the seven. Yes, that's correct. And that's the four ball on the bottom right there by the five. Mm -hmm. Can she come out uh, around that four or five? Shooting follow this one follow two rails around. But uh, I think she might have that available to her. And I think that's what she's doing. That's what it looks like she's doing. Is she going to get safe? No. Yeah, she, just hit, she hit it a little bit on the fat side. I think she was maybe concentrating on coming around that 4-5. or five. Yeah, there was a lot going on there to, to concentrate on. Yes, there was. Then cut to the side. Gonna glance off the seven. No, just playing safe. Okay. Uh, no, Rick. We um, are not planning on being there. We didn't sign up for anything. Um, and uh, you know, it's uh, we're here this weekend. We got to go back home and do stuff. So, and then we have our own tournament that we have to run, but possibly the a week or two after that. All right, looking at a two-rail kick here on the one. And something uh, Rafael Martinez taught me uh, with, the, with a two-rail kick is, I mean, if, you, if you're if you good at visualization, you literally turn the table sideways to have uh, parallel lines with the, um, the cue ball and the object ball. It, and you know, it, it takes sometimes it takes people a little while to start visualizing things or something, but it, because of uh, some of the visualization work that I did with mm -hmm. JD, John Doherty, whatever you may know him by, um, yeah. I start to see things like that pretty easily now. Maybe, uh, maybe after this match or during a break or something, we'll have to draw some pictures on the screen so you can describe what you're talking about, so yeah. so we can follow along. So Janet is ball in hand, just trying to plan her route. Yeah. And with the table open like this, she's trying to plan most of the rack, not just, you know, the three balls ahead, because everything mm -hmm. is laying out there. Yeah, looking for any potential uh, gotchas. Yeah, there's, there's like, no. Like, for example, you know, like she's looking, does that six ball go in the side? Am I going to have to move it with the with another ball? Yeah, no, nope, six ball goes in the side. Oh, she's had her mind on something else and oh, wow. missed the one. That was uncharacteristic for Janet, for sure. And it looks like Sierra can see the one to make it. Yeah, she can, and it's... Uh, almost natural uh, coming off of that first shot on the three. It looks like it passes the four. And if it doesn't, she just come off to, you know, come out the two rail, spin it with some inside there. She could have spun it and come out and shot the three on the side if she needed to. All right. Looks like that three does <coughs> go by the four. Yeah, but her uh, cue ball is going away from the four. Yeah, she'll end up around just about in the center of the table, which is fine. Two balls gonna end up just about in the probably just about the exact center of the table. And she's hitting. It's just a little over pocket oh, speed. Just caught that four. Yeah, she was aiming that. You know, you hit that just a little over pocket speed, and you can hold it up enough. Yeah. And because you know we were talking earlier about uh, the cue ball having to continue spinning backwards until it reaches the object ball, with the object being ball being so close, you don't have to hit it that hard to have it spinning backwards. Right. All right. If this three goes by the eight in the side, which I think it does, then 
Seer is sitting in a pretty good spot here to just shoot the three inside, roll forward to the four. And every time I touch this table, it moves. I need to grab a hold of it to. <laughs> Good shot. Looks like she has just enough angle in this four. She has, she has angle on four. She's not straight. Looks like she has just enough angle to follow to the end rail and back up between the five ten for the five next. Good speed. Six does go on the side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she just wants to bounce off the rail a little bit, so she has angle to come off of the rail to go to the towards you know towards the center of the table for the seven. I think um, the center of the table is probably actually perfect, so she can draw it back out for a shot on the eight. Oh, I think she was thinking about the six ball and. Took her mind off to five. I'm guessing. Only she knows what was actually going on in her head. Yeah. Janet's ended up, well, she could shoot this in the corner or the side. Mm -hmm. I think she can shoot it in the side with some draw to kind of drag it out towards the center so she still has a shot on the seven. Well, she can just barely touch it in. That's what she's looking at and just floating up the uh, five, six inches for the seven. Eight or ten. <laughs> yeah. yeah, got a bit of a tester here. Mm -hmm. I think she's going to have to use some inside English to avoid these side pockets, which she did use some nice. inside, and hit that yeah. uh, that perfect. Yeah, got, a, got a nice view of her uh, sponsor patch there, Emu Blue. <laughs> Yes, I think she's just going to just draw straight up the table about a foot or so. I don't think she's going to go to the rail. Um, Tina, I'm going to go out on a limb and say no. Um, I will go watch. It was a pretty quick match. She was playing Brianna Miller, who played stellar her last match. Doesn't mean she did, um, but I will go check on it for you. No, this is a routine nine nine to the ten for a uh, player of Janet's caliber. You know, she's yeah, some you know some players would uh, you know shoot this with a lot of you know bottom left comes sharp out of that uh, upper left corner two rails, mm -hmm. trying to hit the side the right side rail near the side pocket. Other players would just roll this in and I think that's what Janet's gonna do. And that is what Janet's doing. Yes. No, she's gonna roll it in and come one rail straight at the ten. No, she went to two rails. Tell you, there it is, those cameras tightening up them pockets again. <laughs> they seem to do that a lot. All right, I'm going to go check on that match and uh, look at the... Uh, look at the... Uh, the, um, the winner's bracket and okay. see uh, maybe who we will have for our next match. All right, that sounds good. And that's uh, scheduled for 51 minutes away. All right, and then, uh, let's see. Where's, uh, where's Lou? I don't know where he went. He ran away. Yeah, he does that a lot. Yeah. He's probably upstairs. He's upstairs chit-chatting with the girls. 
<laughs> All right, I'll be right back. Alrighty. Oh, wow. See, I can't believe she missed that. I can't believe she missed that. And uh, there's a confirmation. Uh, Brianna Miller won that match against Adrienne. Adrienne was one round away from the money and having a guaranteed invite to the next tournament. But she did win a match or two, so that's nice. When you're the president of the NAPT, don't you have a guaranteed invite? I don't think so. They I mean, think mean you're under even more scrutiny. You mean they actually play by their own rules? I have no say it isn't so. All right, now I'm going to go back and uh, look at this uh, winter side match and uh, maybe grab a uh, menu. Yes. I could use some food, too. Okay, I'll be back again. All right. Tough shot in this 10 in the side. That's... Small opening from that angle. Nice shot. Capitalizing on that unforced error by Sierra. And now it's going to be Janet's break. Thank you guys for tuning in today. I'm Kevin Ross with Real Birds Productions. Coming at you live from Breaker Sky Lounge in Herndon, Virginia. From the NAPT 10 Ball Invitational. It's their inaugural tournament. Women's Division One Pro Event. The players are taking a quick break. On the fire table over there, looks like April Larson is doing a little practicing. I don't know if that's the table she's going to be playing on next or not. want to give a big thanks to Breaker Sky Lounge for holding this tournament and putting up the money for the uh, money added. It's most generous of you. This is a really beautiful pool room. 13 or 14, not sure which, I think it's 13. Nine foot bronze gold crowns with Simonis cloth. They take care of their tables. Tables are all well maintained. Cloth is in good condition. They actually change it at pretty decent intervals. Not like once every 10 years whether it needs it or not. Like some people do. Full bar, kitchen, DJ, dance floor. Dance, well, dance floor is here all the time. DJ uh, on weekends. All right, I think the players are making their way back to the table. This is going to be Janet's break. See if she can keep the pressure on after that last win. Here we go. Janet's break. She's been hitting them pretty solid. Having some difficulty making a ball on the break. She hit them square. Got a nice spread, but I don't think anything's going in. No, those are spread out really nice. The only problem potentially is that three... I don't know if that goes by the four. 
It looks like the three might have enough room to squeeze by. If not, the billiard might be a possibility also. But I think that three... Oh, actually, yeah, I'm... I stopped looking at the monitor and actually looked at the table. Yeah, the three has plenty of room to go by the four. Now, if only she had a shot on this one ball. So, where do you push out to? I think she's gonna... She's gonna try to tie up the 10 on the 7. I think that's what she's trying to do. I think she was trying to tie up the 10 on the 7 to try to... interfere with Janet's run out. So she has a shot on this one. The two balls that fall just below that 3-4. She could just roll this one in, let the cue ball float past the five ball to the right. First shot on the two in this bottom left corner. She's putting draw on this. She's trying to come back towards the center of the table and she hit that very nice. Nice shot. Now, from the angle she's left herself on the two, she has the option, it looks like, of shooting a three up in the corner if she prefers. But I think she's going to go the rail and back out towards the center for the three in the side. Well, she could do either. She could shoot the three in the side or the corner. She can shoot in the side and go up and down table for the four in the same side. She could also shoot this in the corner and rub off the four. Oh, she missed the three. All right, Sierra's got a nice opportunity here to get back in the match to close up the gap and score. Got a nice shot to get started with. Come around two rails for the four on the side. And then the four to the five is looking pretty good. Five to the six is probably the trickiest part. Oh, if she comes up a little bit short on this four, then the four to the five could be a little tricky too. And she is a bit short on this four. She's going to have to bring this cue ball near that 6, 7, 10. That's going to be running some interference for this cue ball. Now if she shoots this with draw... No, can she, if she shoots with this draw, can she get the cue ball down here back out this way, perhaps? Well, the good news is she does have a shot on the five. Now, as far as that six ball goes, that's another story. And please excuse my chicken scratches on the on the screen. An art major, I was not. Is she gonna get? Uh, she is. She's. 
she's got lucky there, and this is where the rules are different between this tournament and you know, that tournament last weekend, where at the Ginky Memorial, if because she didn't call safe, the incoming player would have the option to pass this back. In this tournament, that is not the case. Janet must uh, shoot from here. And she's just trying to tie up that six on the eight. And I don't know if she has done that. Sierra's looking at it. She doesn't look all that enthused about it. Yeah. She does have a bank shot on this. She could bank the six cross side. If the six doesn't go in that side. I hate when I do that. Miss Ball in hand. Whoa. So Sierra was playing position for the six and a side it looked like. Janet came to the table and said, I don't think I like that idea. I think I'm going to try to break this out. Now it looks to me like she could just barely feather off the you know that that right side of that six ball the right side on the screen cue ball to the rail and then to the other side of the eight well, the six ball just barely moves to the left a little bit it's one possible safety she can also thin off the other side of the six bring the cue ball down to this bottom rail by the bottom left corner what she's doing. Oh, she's trying to bring the cue ball back up the, up the side rail. Well, all she's left for Sierra is another safety. This is the simple little safety. And Janet's looking at uh, kicking the six in the side. Nope, she's looking at uh, kicking behind the six and then calling it cross corner just in case it goes in. But I think her main objective, I think she's actually just trying to play safe on the six, but just in case it goes, she's going to call it. And I believe she is hooked. I don't think she has a window between that 710. Here comes the jump cue.
Alright, call on the six in the upper left corner. Good hit. Let's lift a lift a cut shot for Janet. And she can just roll this in. Keep those come up one rail for the seven. She didn't like it. She wanted to play safe. It's a good safe. No easy kick at this. No easy jump shot either. She has to get over the 8 and the 10. That's a kind of a tall order. And still keep the cue ball and 6 ball on the table. She's going for it. She's bringing out the jump cue. This is a much tougher jump shot than that last one. Okay, okay. Next match, 4 p.m. match. Tara Williams, Naomi Williams. I'm the putting the, the whole the bank. The Williams sisters? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm putting the bankroll on, on Williams to win. Yeah, Chris usually waits to the end of the rounds to update the bracket so he doesn't have to go and open and add and open and add. He, and, uh, so, and right now we do have a full 12 matches going. Um, like if he gets all of the winner side done, he'll update that usually sometimes. Or all of one side done, he'll do that. But he doesn't like to go back in there four, five, six, ten times to, you know, update just one or two matches. I think Kevin told you that this is a true double elimination tournament. I did not uh, mention that yet. I didn't get to that yet. Yep, this is true. It's a blind draw, no seeding, and true double elimination tournament. No seeding. Woohoo. No seeding. Janet and, and Karen 64. have the same t same chance of drawing each other first round as we have, you know, everybody else has of drawing them. And, and I think 60 that's... And 64 player field instead of 48. Mm-hmm. Not only in that, not only in the, that other tournament format, not only do the top players get seeded so they don't play each other, they also get buys. They get yeah, they get a buy first round, um, and they're guaranteed that they are going to play somebody their actual first match that is at least ranked seventeenth or less. Right. So they're guaranteed uh, first the buy and then an easy match for them. <laughs> Good work if you can get it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, you know, I think that if you know if, if you're the best, if your name is Karen Core, Allison Fisher, you know you sh you, you got to be able to win tournaments playing all of them girls first. You know, if you're the best, that's that's what I've always believed. But then you know, you look tennis seeds their tournaments too. Yep. I mean, yeah, you like to see the top two players, you know, make it, you know, at least to the to the towards the end of the tournament. You don't want them, you know, playing each other first yeah, round knocking and having each them other knocking out. each other out. I understand that, but also to guarantee that they get a buy and then guarantee that they get a easy match their next round. You know, I don't know. Well, that's the seeding part, but guaranteeing a buy also is kind of rubs me the wrong way a little bit too. Yeah. Well, that means you're automatically in the money. Yeah, because they pay fifty percent of the field. That's the <laughs> other thing. Anyway, back to this one. 
Alright, it looks like she's left herself a little bit of angle on the side so she can shoot us with uh, some high right and follow one rail back up for this nine in the upper right corner. She could also play short side of the nine if she wanted, but I like uh, follow a little bit of follow with a little bit of right. That'll bring the cue ball down towards towards the ten. Yeah. It looks like that's what she's gonna do. She's gonna shoot it into as far as she can to of the left hand side of that hole probably. To get more angle off of it. Oh she decided to play it off the rail. She must have been straighter than it looked. She also hit that eight a lot fuller than she wanted, I think, even no. going rail first. I think she was expecting that cue ball to come across the table farther than that. No. Or I think she was trying to go short sight on the nine. Do you thin the, uh, bank the 9 and put the cue ball behind the 10, or do you 2-rail the 9 down to the end rail, that 2-rail uh, 9 ball say, you know, safe where it's, you, they can see the ball, but, you know. Banking really mean corner or side? No, oh, no, banking it 2 rails down oh, to bank, the end. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. The 9 ball safety, 2 rails down to the, you know, to the end rail. And cue ball hopefully on the end rail or somewhere near it. Or thin the nine and put the cue ball behind mm -hmm. the ten. I, I I think that's huge. I mean, there's so much room, there is so little room for error on thinning the nine. Well, I don't think this I don't think this sits right for the for the double bank on the nine safety because just hitting this straight brings the nine ball kind of close down to this corner pocket down here. Sure. If you if you wanna. If you cut it at all so that the cue ball goes towards the other rail, then, well, you might just make the nine in the corner. Which, oh, isn't, yeah. which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Hmm. But if you're trying to play safe, that's not what you had in mind. to do here? I still don't know. She may just uh, kind of thin bank the nine down to this end rail. Actually, she thinks she's just trying to get behind the ten. Has left the uh, long, almost straight in nine ball for Sierra. So did she go for the bank? No, and she uh, she tried to get the cue ball behind the ten yeah. and hit the ten with the cue ball. Just make it. That's it. Just make it. And this is another one of those just off straight in. Mm -hmm. and she's handled that nice. Cue ball pops off the rail. First straight in shot on the 10. Oh, Rebecca Slider is down here playing, ladies and gentlemen. That means she won her last match upstairs. Playing to get in the money. For all of you uh, PNW peeps. Go Pacific Northwest. Mm, there we go. All right. Bring, brings closing. it back within scratching distance. Closes no. the gap to within one. Yeah. It's easy to just sit over here and say what you think you might do and what you would do. But, in, you know, t I've never missed a ball from the chair. From I the have. rail. I have. I'm not, I'm not as good as you. Uh, you'll get there one day. Don't worry, honey. Well, it's not so much I miss balls from the rail. It's just my speed is off uh, from the rail a lot. <laughs> well, it's kind of hard to get your whole arm into it from way over here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, there's, there's a lot of pressure on these women. On young ladies.
some customers wanting to just kind of stroll into the players area here. The players area. Yeah, sit down next to one of them, and start having a conversation. <laughs> there, here's your sign. There's a <laughs> sign at both <laughs> of the places where you can come walk through here that say, "Please walk around. Tournament in progress." Maybe he thought that meant he was free to walk around. <laughs> <laughs> Start chatting with the ladies. You know, say, oh, so I see. Do you play much pool? Yeah. You look like Do you you're come pretty here often? You look like you're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> maybe uh, you and your uh, lady friend there that are playing against each other, maybe you'd like to play some doubles against me and my friend here. <laughs> Uh, we're kind of busy. <laughs> yeah. All right, Sierra's break. Yep. Yeah, so these uh, these B side matches that are playing right now, they're big matches. We talked earlier; these are for the girls to get into the money and to get an invitation to the next event. This is the uh, you know the new pro tour out there. Then uh, they're yeah, this is B side match. This is uh you know the bubble match. Yeah. On the bubble. Yeah, you got the uh, possibility of the whole world being able to see you, even if they're not watching now, because these matches are going to be up, uh, you know, for everybody's viewing pleasure on uh, YouTube. From now till the end of time. Yeah. Or, or until Google goes out of business. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that that's, that's a lot of stress. That's a lot of pressure. All right, Janet's called the 10 in the corner. Nice shot, Janet. Yeah. She was uh, not wanting to mess with that. That's the 3-9 up there, right? Right. Uh, with that, it's, you know, yeah, you go for it. I didn't see where the uh, the cue ball and the object ball ended up if she was playing a, ba a backup safety or if she just flat out went for the shot. I didn't notice. Yeah, I just noticed that it was a nice shot because it was a little bit of an off angle there. <coughs> uh, and you at home, you know what you could do? What can they do at home? They could rewind it and tell us because they we could? have DVR features on our stream. Maybe we'll have to uh, start making use of this instant replay feature of this uh program one of these days. Yeah. I know somebody who knows like all the shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts for things that I don't know. Yeah, I'll get around to that one of these days. Start making more use of the instant replay on here. Yeah. You used to like to try it, you know, with the jump shots and things like that. And I got enough going on. Uh oh. Kojak in the subway. Kojak in the subway. I guess uh, Rick thought our little thing there about the walking around was funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's only there's only been like three or four people that they've had to stop in the last two days, and you know, for the amount of people that have been in this place, that's pretty good percentage. And if you're watching and you got somebody that's here playing and you know they're in a match right now, you want to know how they're doing, what their score is, give us a shout out. We'll send our intern to go get the score update. Yeah. If we can find him. <laughs> yeah. He's another one of those, hey, you come here often? No. <laughs> <laughs> right, so Sierra shooting this one in the corner. So I guess, uh, I guess the two does go by the six. Looks like that's what she was playing position for. I think she came up a little short. Yeah, she's going to walk over and look at it again. What if you bank the two out of there and put Whitey over behind the nine? Yeah, from this angle, that might be the best option just because cutting this two in and trying to avoid those balls. I think she's doing your shot. That's what it looks like she's doing. Yeah, just, you know, you got to be sure that it's not coming, that you're not banking it straight back up into because you have <laughs> to. Yeah, don't make yeah, the two. Don't make the deuce. Make sure you're not making it. It's right, a good shot. A good shot. I've been playing for how many years, and this 18-year-old knows my shots. 
I'm glad she does. No, she didn't. She didn't do the two rails behind the nine. She only, <laughs> went, she only went to it in one rail. Yeah, yeah. She didn't do the two rail, or it, it makes that ball, that safety ball, so much, whatever you want to call it, so much bigger. Put a red button on the sign that forces them to look at it. Yeah, they're like, "What's that button for? Do I should I push it?" <laughs> Get an easy button that doesn't work. Yeah, that, uh, what was it, it wasn't, was it Brain Games where they did that uh, thing if they, you know, putting uh, walkways and people, like, uh, you know, cording things off and putting arrows, people go that way. And yeah, I think, I think, I think that was, I think that was Brain Games. Yeah, I think it was uh, in one of those things they talked about something like that. Uh, that was, that was a tough, uh, that was a tough hit for... Yeah, you're, you're coming into the short ra that short angle there. The ten ball's big. You almost you have I to hit it long, shorten it up, or go two rails. That was a tough hit, and she just barely missed it. All right, ball in for Sierra. She's got a good chance here to tighten up that score. Yep. Oh, looks like. Uh, we got a few matches Get that are already over this round. Yeah. Yeah, it might be uh, something, I don't know, I'm sure that they've worked on it with the girls, but uh, stopping on the way out instead of on the way in gives you more room for error. But, you know, bump that rail and have the cue ball come off of it. Right. Yeah, Sarah, yeah, Sarah's, but she's, been, yeah, she's been struggling with the speed on this table this whole match. This is pretty good. She can just bounce off the rail for the five in the upper right corner. Trying to get straight in on the five. Yeah. This is a little bit of a finesse stroke, and it's just not so much don't bottom. Touch, just don't touch the six. You want to leave the six right there. Don't bun don't touch it. Good shot. Very nice. Yeah, not so it's a little bit more right-hand English there than it is bottom English, isn't it? To get it, if you put too much draw, you draw it up the rail too far. Michael, thank you very much for your kind words. We love hearing uh, positive feedback like that. Uh, we, like we don't we don't mind the negative stuff so much, but we really like the positive stuff. Yeah, we do. We like feedback, you know. If you, th you know, maybe you've got a suggestion of something that could work better. I mean, I don't know, you know, something you hear or see that uh, you say, hey, did you notice that? We want to hear that, too. I might get a little touchy or edgy about it, but, you know, it's okay. <laughs> I'm more likely to than Kevin is. I'm going to uh, see how this uh, fried rice looks. Maybe see how it tastes for half a second. I think that uh, means uh, you guys are stuck with listening to just me for a little while. Not exactly what she had in mind. Be right back. So I am being joined in the commentator's booth by Britt. How you doing, Britt? Oh, I'm doing all right, Kevin. Thank you for inviting me to come and hang out with you today. Uh, I have problem. to say you're doing a great job with the uh, broadcasting. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. I uh, help out with the broadcasting with the Northeast Women's Tour. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, you've got state-of-the-art equipment here. And 
Well, uh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Sierra missed that uh, that tough shot from the rail. Yeah. And the seven has left this hanging for yeah. Janet. Well, Janet's been doing really well here these last few days. It it was absolutely awesome to run into her uh, up at Valley Forge this year. Yeah, the Super Billiards Expo. Yeah, yeah, she was up there. Uh, we had we had some major people up there, and in fact, um, she played Allison Fisher, and well, Vivian Villarreal played uh, right. Allison, and and uh, Allison came over and said, "Gee, you know, I was just." Playing with her, and the next thing I knew, she was a tornado. Right, so but Janet, Janet was there playing, and uh, in fact, we we've had a few people who were here. I was just talking to Anita, who who played, and uh, Judy Wilson, who's been doing so well here today. She uh, she played up there. Right. And did quite well. well. I think over on the amateur side, mainly. Great. By the way, I don't know if I told you, but, you know, I had to leave early yesterday and head back um, home. And so we had the uh, the Judy Wilson match up, and ah. it was just awesome the way you, you had everything fixed up and the commentating. It was Glad. It uh, it's nice to be appreciated. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. Janet's, uh, she started off with that seven ball hanging in the pocket, had nice speed on that, controlled it nicely for the eight up in the corner. Straight on this nine, going to draw back a little bit. Just hit that very nice. Yeah. It's hard to control the distance of a draw when you're drawing from a long distance away, right. and she's done that nice. Yeah. It's definitely one of the things that uh, Tori Lowry uh, worked on her with during her 14 days. Yeah. She was talking about that uh, yesterday, about some yeah. of the drills and that was one of them right well, i think it's just absolutely wonderful now that we're having the women playing 10 ball because you know i'm just so used to the the nine ball format and and 10 ball is different 10 ball is very different from nine yeah. ball yeah All right it's going to be sierra's break yeah. Yeah, so how has she been doing today huh How's what? How has Sierra been doing on her break? On her break, uh, I think she's been uh, having trouble making the ball, yeah. as have most of the ladies. Yeah. I know that uh, uh, while I was watching the... It's the hard to make a ball in, in 10 ball. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I know. I've tried it. <laughs> but I'm definitely a nine ball player. Nine ball is uh, still my favorite game. Yeah. By far. I think needing to say, you know, what pocket you're going to make really takes some of the uh, luck out of the game. It takes the luck out of the game for sure, um, which is why which is why I don't really care for 10 ball that much. Um, the way they are changing the rules of the game, they are tailoring the game more and more for the pros and less for the amateurs. Amateurs outnumber the pros probably 100 to 1. And when you exclude, you know, 99% of the people in favor of the 1%, uh, you just, I think it's going to, it discourages the amateurs from, from entering the tournaments when if when there are better players in it because 10 ball does favor the better player more than more than 9 ball does. Uh, and, you know, tournaments are, are, you know, they're struggling to fill fields everywhere in the country. And when you implement rules that kind of discourage amateurs from playing i think that's just gonna i think that, that will kill the game more than more than anything when you tailor it too much to the pros yeah who are only one percent of the, the pool playing population or maybe even less than that well that's true i mean you know i was captain but that's of my, my that's my opinion <laughs> well you know I, I was captain of the apa um, team nine ball over at carpool in arlington virginia and um I will say APA is live and well. Oh, yeah. And that's, you know, nine ball and eight ball. Yeah, and BCA league, too. Yeah. Not yeah. a lot of ten ball. No. <laughs> right, well, she's hit them fairly square, but still uh, has come up dry on the break. 
Left a long shot yeah. on the one for Janet. Yeah. I was watching Eugenia play Karen Core earlier today, and, and it was like, you know, until the very end of the match, it really looked like people were coming up dry. Mm -hmm. So even the best players have a problem with, with the break. Right. With the 10 ball. What, what do you think of the magic rack? You know, I'm used to the plain old wooden racks. Or, you know, or the Deltas. Or what do you think of the Magic Rack we've been I using here this week? I love playing with the Magic Rack. Uh, and there's a, you know, there's another uh, uh, similar type of rack out there called the Aki Rack, which is uh, made by somebody else. But um, it's not made of plastic like the Magic Rack is. It's made of, like, a cloth-type material. So it's it's much more flexible. It doesn't, uh, you can you can crumple it up and it doesn't crease like the plastic does, so it's easier to store. And mm. it's a little bit thinner than the plastic, so it doesn't interfere with the balls as much, so. Mm. Uh, and the Accurac is being used, I think, on one of the tables here because we brought ours with us. Oh, wow, okay. So, shout out to the Accurac uh, guys. I, I was using um, one of those racks up at Marley's Billiards up in Pennsylvania mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. And I, I, I found it hard to place the balls, even though everybody says it's supposed to be so simple. Uh, it can be a challenge, especially if the balls are not new, if they're, uh, if they're old and worn and all the balls are different sizes. Uh, uh, there's, it's almost impossible to get them tight even in the magic rack. But yeah, and it does take a little bit of practice to be able to rack with the magic rack. Yeah. It's not as simple as some people might make it look. And it takes a little bit of practice to, to do it well. I think a major problem that m my opponents had when we were playing was uh, just trying to get the balls off of the magic rack, uh, you know, similar to what we have right here. It's, it's like you have to keep playing until until a, yeah. a ball moves. So. And you could ask the referee to, uh, to remove the, the rack at any time if, the, if you wanted, even if there's multiple balls on it. I mean, if there's like eight balls on it, well, that would probably say, no, we're not going to do it. But yeah. if there was two balls on it, they could mark the positions and remove the rack. Really? Janet's been playing really well. She's on the hill right now. She is on the hill, and she's going to get behind that five. I think she just got there. I think she's just got her hooked. Yeah. Looks like she's just looking at just the one rail straight out. She's called the two in this uh, bottom right corner on the screen. Okay. Good hit. All right. Is yeah, she going to get safe? No, it's not going to have enough speed. Not bad. Now, it looks to me like she can, she can shoot the two in the side and let the cue ball roll forward to okay. around the middle of the table. And she may not even, she may not end up with a full shot at the three, but she has a very makeable real first shot on the three. Okay. Even if she comes up a little bit short shooting the two in the side. Let's see what Janet does. Right. Well, it is nice having Janet back in the game, I will say that. Has she been uh, out of the game for a while? Mm, yeah. But it is nice. I mean, we are surrounded here with some of the some really fantastic players. I was uh, just talking to Sarah, who will be playing uh, Karen next. She's from Arizona. Uh, we have a lady here from Canada. I think we have people from all over. And the uh, lady from Canada is uh, Brittany Bryant? Yeah, yeah.
Alright, uh, Janet was uh, trying to shoot that with some draw to try to draw over for shape on the three and just missed that two. Yeah, hasn't, I would hasn't left an easy shot for Sia. She right. could try to cut it this uh, to either corner, but I I look for her to probably just bank the two up table and leave her leave her behind one of these balls yeah. here. See, I rather thought she was going to do a safety. Yeah, but if it was, to, yeah, she attempted yep. a safety there, but just has it just a little too yeah. hard there. She's been struggling with the speed of the table this this whole match. Right. I I think when you watch. And you would know because you go all around the country doing this. Uh, it seems to me that w when I watch women play, uh, we're talking about finesse mm -hmm. and safeties. And when I watch the gentlemen, like at Turning Stone or at the U.S. Open, um, it's it, it's more of a an aggressive game, I guess we'd say. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's generally true. Yeah. Hate to speak, you know. Hate to be stereotypical about it, but uh, well, there's yeah. stereotypes for a reason because <laughs> they're usually true. All right. I think probably one of the neatest. Uh, sure, I'm sorry. <coughs> I think the uh, U.S. Open this year is going to be interesting. You know, Barry Berman passed away, right? unfortunately, after a serious illness. He'd been running it for many years. I think that's one of the oldest men's tournaments. Yeah, the U.S. Open 9-ball. Um, yeah, yeah, CSI uh, does the U.S. Open 8-ball and U.S. Open 10-ball in Vegas now. Yeah, okay. Those are played on 7-foot uh, diamonds. All right. There's a little bit of uh, controversy over should something, you know, that's called U.S. Open be played on bar boxes. Um, really? Sorry, what really? Was that? Yeah. Uh, on bar boxes? <laughs> yeah, sorry, I had yeah, heard. Yeah, seven foot. Yeah, the U.S. Open eight ball and U.S. Open ten ball. They're played on uh, seven foot diamonds, yeah. as opposed to say nine foot diamonds or nine foot gold crowns. So, yeah, some people th think, you know, that, you know, something as prestigious as a U.S. Open shouldn't be played on a, on a small table. It should be on a big table. Um, well, I'm, I'm afraid the game I'm is, the, game is, the game is not necessarily easier on a small table. I've played a lot of pool on seven-foot tables, nine-foot tables. Um, they are two totally different games. They're both hard in different ways. Uh, nine yeah. ball on a seven foot table. Yeah, the shots are a lot closer. Uh, if you can see the ball, you can make it basically. All you have to do is just see it and you can make it. You don't have to. But the hard part is you get a lot more clusters. Everything's closer together. You have to play position much more precise than you do on a nine foot table. Nine foot tables, you don't get clusters as often. You can have bigger areas for playing position. Um, but the shots are farther away at those, so you have to be a better shot maker generally. Yeah. So they're they're different games. They're hard yeah. in different ways. That was a nice little safety that uh, Janet just played. Yeah, yeah. I I played a few times on the bar box tables. Uh, the seven foots are used um, out here at uh, Break Shop for the APA triannuals, and so when the different divisions get together in the APA to play in this area, DC. Uh, uh, Maryland, Virginia. Right. It's been on seven-foot tables, the APA, yeah. where m a lot of us, you know, have played throughout the year with our teams, and we're either on nine-foot tables or eight and a half, and then you show up for the, you know, for the big divisions, and there you are on these tiny tables. Right, right. But these tables are really in very good shape here, I, mm. I have to say. I yes, really think Breaker Sky Lounge has done a wonderful job at, on having good tables, good environment. Um, That's a great I'm environment here. Nice tables, great environment. Yeah. I'm very grateful that they are, they're basically sponsoring us here uh, for the North American Pool Tour. This is a great way to start the tour, having it right here. 
Is she going to get behind that eight? Yeah. Very and she nice did. Shot. Nice shot. Mission accomplished here. here. This is going to be a tough one, yeah, because that seven yeah. ball is kind of blocking the one rail up and down table. Right. She's probably going to have to go two rails uh, down down so at this end of the table, two rails under the under the ten. Well, I think Sierra's been doing a good job. Janet is known, I think, for her safeties. And uh, well, that was a good one. Yeah, sure was. Yeah, she's just looking at uh, coming around two rails this way. Oh, that's a terrible draw. Let me try this again. Let's go this way, this way, this. Nope, I can't do it. I'm not going to try drawing anymore. All right. Uh, or three rails. Three rails works too. Oh and right. well, she has left a shot. Yeah. Well, I know when I kick, I am very grateful when I'm able to hit the ball. Right. It yeah. That's that's objective number one. Hit the ball. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, it's like you don't know where the cue ball might go. You have an idea, I think, where the object ball is going, but not the cue ball. There you go. Here you go, another safety. Yeah, Janet didn't didn't want to go for it. Maybe she thought that uh, that nine ball was in the way of bringing the cue ball back and forth across for the five, so just decided right. to just play safe. Yeah. She's an excellent player, and she's very patient. I was just reading an article about patience in the game. Yeah. How important it is to have that. Nice. Two rail kick. And Think it'll be behind the 10? No, well, she let her see the ball, but it's a long, oh, okay. long, long, long cut here. A lot of distance. Right. Looks like, you know, if, if she could play safe here, just bank the four out of there, trying to leave the cue ball behind the five. Okay. But if she wants to cut at this, she can come up and down table between the five six, I think, without hitting them, or maybe not. So she is very thoroughly behind that seven. I mean, it's easy to hit if you go to that right side rail, but it's also easy to scratch in either corner pocket. You could, if you hit the five, you know, hit the five, you know, kind of on the right side of full, you could easily scratch in that uh, upper right corner. If you hit on the top of the five, you can scratch in that upper left corner. Okay. Well. And that's the way she is going. I mean, hitting that's easy, but avoiding the scratches, that's a little bit harder. Okay. Good hit. And she's going to mm, leave She's that not going to be happy Sierra. with this, I'm afraid. Better than ball in hand. Barely. She's looking at uh, shooting the five in the corner and then coming back across table near the side pocket, near the side rail, you know, around where she put that chalk. This is one possibility. She could also leave it more towards the center of the table and have a more of a cut on the six. Yeah. I think I like coming back across towards the rail. That way, it makes position from the six to the seven a little bit easier. Either way would work, though. Okay. Well, we'll see which way she goes. Speed's a little bit more critical on going all the way to the rail, and since she's been having such trouble with speed, I'm not surprised that she did, that, that she, she chose this she route. All right. Speed isn't, wasn't as critical on this shot. Okay. 
Okay. And that's if she didn't go too far. So is that eight ball interfering slightly? So where is she going next? Uh, the six ball is the one in yeah. the bottom right. left corner, and then the seven ball by the right side pocket. So, so it's. I don't know. She was looking at it like maybe that eight ball is slightly blocking. Right, the I was six. wondering if it was. If it isn't, she can just you know, a little bit of bottom right pop out for the seven in the side. All okay. Right. She left it right there. Okay. I think the tournament director has done a great job at keeping things moving here this yeah. last few days. Yeah, Chris and Ford, they always do a good job. Yeah. So, obviously making the seven side isn't that, isn't that difficult, but she's going to have to kind of shoot just a little bit below center to go to the end yeah. rail and back, which definitely makes it harder right. when she's shooting out of the, out of the pocket like that. I think maybe there was some adrenaline running there. All right, so Janet's got a good opportunity here to put this set away if she can get a favorable angle on this eight because the nine ball is, actually is, the, is the key shot here. So you think she's going to go two rails or just one? Uh, I think... I think she can shoot this with some. I it, think yeah. she can shoot this with some bottom right to come through rails. Well, she'll want to use draw so that the, to come short out of that rail. Mm -hmm. She's mm -hmm. overhit that. I. So she went three three rails. Yeah, it's yeah. She's overhit that a bit. So yeah, it's it's never easy. Yeah. She's probably going to uh, just knock the eight to the other side of the ten. Use, use try to get that cue ball up on the ten. Well, you know, I do think the uh, the speed on the table has been changing. When we started out this morning, it was a bit humid in here. And I think everybody, uh, well, a lot of people thought that maybe the balls were running slow. Mm -hmm. But now it's cooling off and um, drying up in here. And I think things might be at a faster pace. Well, Janet seemed to have the speed down on that last safety there. She hit, that, she hit that really nice. Yeah. My teacher always said, just remember, you and your opponent are playing the same table. <laughs> Absolutely right. Yeah, so let's see. All right, well, she just called the uh, eight in that upper right corner. She's going to try to kick behind it. Okay. Actually, I'd, I like. I'd, I'd prefer to call it in the in that right side because that's. I'd be aiming to try to hit the eight towards that side, not towards the corner. Because what I'm really trying to do is I'm just trying to bank the eight to that end rail. I'm trying to play the speed where the eight will end up on that end rail. So I'm going to the side rail and the end rail with okay. the eight is what I'm trying. I that think she's made. Look it. at she's that. She's called it and made nice. it. Nice. That was a fantastic kick. Yeah. See, that is what I know or don't know. See, I always have a problem with this particular shot. But had she, not, had she not made that and hung it there, then that would have been game over. As, as I was saying, I, I would, uh, myself, I like trying to kick it towards this. I'm, I'm, I'm aiming towards the, the side rail and then to the end rail with the eight, trying to play the speed, leave it up on the end rail. and I'll call it in the side in case it goes, and hopefully I'll have a shot on the nine. So she's doing I didn't, I didn't see right. where she called this. Yeah. Or if she called it at all. Oh. Uh, oh, that's not looking good for Sierra. No, it isn't. It's table gets rather empty with only two balls when you're sitting on the hill, huh? Yeah, she's going to come around two rails sharp, yeah. hitting the third rail right about where her hand was. 
on a diamond down below the side pocket. There she'll go two rails. Oh. That looks pretty good. All right, well set up here. Oh. Well, excellent match, wasn't it, Kevin? That was a good match. Yeah.